What's going on YouTube? It's Machanga back with another video. Today we're taking a quick look at the new Razor Huntsman Mini. So many people love the normal Huntsman, but I never used a Razor keyboard before now. If you want to check this one out in more detail, I'll leave affiliate links below in the video description. So let's just jump right in. In the box, you get the keyboard of course, some paperwork including the manual and some stickers, plus the detachable braided USB-C cable. Taking a look around the keyboard, it's a plastic body with an aluminum plate underneath the keys. This is a 60% keyboard, so it's nice, compact, and portable. It's really lightweight at around one pound or 458 grams, which could be a good or a bad thing, depending on what you prefer. Personally, I prefer a bit more heft to my primary keyboard since I use it mostly on my desk. These are double shot PBT keycaps, so they do have a bit of texture, they're oil resistant, and they feel pretty nice overall. There are a few other keycap color options available from Razer, and I got the Mercury White set. Something to keep in mind, if you decide to swap the original keycaps out for any of the upgrade sets, you do lose the shortcut icons that have been side printed here. So removing the keycap reveals the purple Razer optical switch. These are clicky optical switches with 1.5 millimeters of actuation and 45 grams of force. You can also get this keyboard with the red linear optical switches if you prefer a quieter experience. Since we're talking about the switches, I might as well let you hear how they sound for yourself. So here's a quick typing test.
I like the click of the board for the most part, but the space bar really ruins the typing experience for me. I feel like it's loose and rattles way too much. I know so many people lube their switches, but I'm pretty simple and I just want a satisfying sound and feel right out of the box. I could probably change the stabilizers and hope for less wobble and rattle, so we'll see how it holds up. Moving to the bottom of the board, we get nice multi-step feet to help with ergonomics and rubber pads on each corner. I like having the option of using the feet because some of my 60% boards are just flat and that's it. My desktop here in this study is a whiteboard surface that's glossy and it can be slippery so having some good weight and grip is important when I'm typing or gaming. There's also this neat print that kind of shines in the light. The USB-C port is recessed in the back, but the cutout is a fairly good size, so using custom cables shouldn't be a problem. I have one I use a lot and it fit right in with ease and the connection is really strong. It takes a bit of force to pull it out, and that's good if you've ever been concerned about the cable coming out during a heated gaming session. You've already seen the side printed shortcuts here, and that's great, so for any of the media controls or accessing the arrow keys, you can just hold the function button and click the key you're after. This makes operation super easy and it doesn't require memorizing anything or referencing the manual. Speaking of the function button, when you hold it, all of the buttons with the function or shortcut will light up as a reminder of which keys do what. Now, this next feature is pretty common on a range of keyboards in different price categories, but pressing the function key along with any of the numbers one through seven will allow you to access RGB lighting effects. Apparently, the Razer Synapse software has always been the only way to activate these lighting effects, so I guess I can give Razer a small thumbs up for finally joining the party, since it'll excite avid Razer fans. The RGB lighting isn't super bright, which I like. It's nice, clean, and understated. I haven't seen it on the white version, but I'm confident it looks just as good. So should you spend between 120 and 130 bucks on the Razer Huntsman Mini? If you're just obsessed with Razer products and you have that brand loyalty, sure, go ahead. But for someone that enjoys mechanical keyboards, this optical gaming keyboard might not be the best value for your money. There are quite a few less expensive options that offer the same features plus higher build quality and even hot swappable switches. I'll leave some great alternatives linked below in the video description, but I want to know your thoughts. If you're a gamer, does this keyboard seem right for you? If you just like the 60% form factor like I do, is this one on your wish list? Well, that's my time guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you feel like it, jump down in the comment section and share your thoughts with me. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you tap the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.